Hello friends. Today in this lecture we are going to learn about the regression analysis. Okay. So as we all know that regression analysis is a statistical procedure for predicting the impact of one or more factors on the another variable. That means in this regression analysis we are going to take minimum of two variables and we are going to see the impact of one variable on another. So minimum of two variables will be there. There can be more than two variables also. That means we can see the impact of two variables on the third variable. We can see the impact of four variables on the fifth variable. So that means that's why we can say that regression analysis is a statistical procedure. That means this is a procedure for predicting. That means we are just giving our views that what is the impact of one or more factors on another variable. This regression analysis is used in businesses, in financial sector. That means for every sector we are going to use this regression analysis in whatever way we want to do the analysis. And this regression analysis is frequently used to determine the impact of a particular inputs on outputs. Now let's take an example. Suppose I want to do the analysis to anticipate the impact of steel price on the automobile sales. This can also happen that if the steel price increases, what will be the impact on automobile sales? Or there can be more variables. Let's say we can say that marketing strategies can also impact the automobile sales. Or I can say that the uh, sale of other products can also impact the sales of the automobiles. So there are various factors which are going to impact the sales of automobile. So just to find out the impact of all the factors or whatever factors we want to consider to see the impact on automobile sales, we name it as a regression analysis. Or let's take the another example. I can say that interest rates, steel prices, oil prices, and national income all have an influence on the stock price of automobile firm. So that means in the above example, we have taken only one variable that is steel price and I want to see the impact of on automobile sales. But in this example, I am seeing the impact of interest rate also impact the stock price, maybe the steel prices, maybe the oil prices, maybe the national income. So that means in this I have seen, I am taking four variables, I am seeing the impact of these four variables on the stock price of the automobile firm. So that means a uh, minimum of two variables will be there and you can take more than two variables to see the impact of uh, variables on the other variable. Or even if I can say that if I want to see the employee's performance, so there can be the management style can be the one factor which impacts the employee's performance or there can be the corporate culture or there can be the digital work or there can be the day-to-day -day work duties and outflows of the employee or it can be the employee experience or it can be the employee onboarding. So that means there are various factors which are affecting the performance of an employee. So if I want to study the impact of all these factors on the performance of an employee, I will name it as a regression analysis. So whenever we are having the regression analysis, we will be having two variables in that. One is the dependent variable and one is known as independent variable. So that means the variable which is being influenced is called the dependent variable and the other variables are called the independent variables. For example, if I take the previous example, if I'm going to see the impact of steel price on automobile sales, so this automobile sales will be your dependent variable because this sales is depending on the price of the steel. And the prices of the steel will be your independent variable. Similarly over here, your interest rate, steel prices, oil prices and national income will be considered as an independent variables and the stock price of automobile firm will be considered as a dependent variable because this stock price is dependent on these factors. So that's why it is known as dependent and these are the independent variables. So whenever we are talking about the regression model, we have two kinds of regression model. One is known as simple regression model and second is multiple regression model. As I have already discussed that in simple regression model, we will be having one independent variable and one dependent variable. 
and in multiple regression model that means as the word suggests the word multiple there will be more than one independent variables and one dependent variable that means more than one factors are influencing the dependent variable now let's go with the equation now whenever we are making the regression equation this is a simple regression equation as i have already discussed that in the simple regression equation we will be having two variables one is your independent variable which is represented by x and one is your dependent variable which is y so the equation will be y is equals to a plus beta x plus error term where y will be your dependent variable that means variable that you are trying to predict x will be the variable that you are using to predict that means with the help of x i am going to predict y so this is the independent variable a will be considered as an intercept that means we can name it as some constant b or you can say beta will be the slope and e or we can say the error term will be considered as a regression residual now let me tell you what do you mean by regression residual as i have already taken the previous example that uh, if i am going to say that i want to see the impact on the stock price so there will be the various variables which are impacting the stock price one can be your dividend if the company is paying dividend then yes, i say that the price will increase or i can say that government policies government policies are going to impact the price of the share or i can say the competitors price now suppose i am going to take these three variables only and i am going to consider what is the impact of these three variables on the stock price but do you think that only these three variables are going to impact the price there will be various other factors for example there are some hidden factors which i have not taken as an independent variable let's say i take one example of covid 19 so i can say that covid 19 has also impact the share price so that means i have not considered the covid 19 as a variable as an independent variable so that covid 19 is hidden over here in this regression residuals so residuals means all those factors which we have not taken as an independent variable or which we have not considered in our equation that will be considered as a residuals so residuals we can say that hidden factors which we are not taking now let's come with the multiple regression equation as i have already discussed that in multiple regression equation there will be more than one independent variable so our equation will be y that is your dependent variable will be equals to a plus beta 1 x1 that means variable 1 beta 2 x2 variable 2 variable 3 and so on and plus your residuals that means some factors some variables i have taken but still after taking some factors there will be still some factors which i have not considered so that are hidden over here so we name it as a residuals that means residuals are those factors which we have not considered but yes they can impact your dependent variable y now again y is the variable that we are trying to predict that means that will be the dependent variable x will be the independent variables now here we are having more than one independent variable so that's why we name it as a multiple regression a will be your intercept b is again your slope and e is a regression residuals that's why i have written residuals because there can be more factors which i have not considered which are hidden over here now let's move with the type of test now whenever we are doing the regression we have different kinds of tests so i have to see whether regression comes under which type of test we have two types of test one is parametric test and one is non parametric test our regression analysis comes under the parametric test now what do you mean by what parametric parametric means those tests which are based on certain assumptions and regression is based on certain assumptions so that's why we named regression analysis as a parametric test now we are going to study certain assumptions which are important for the regression analysis now the question arises why these assumptions are important so i can say that these assumptions are important to validate the model 
Now, whatever assumptions we are going to study, if any of these assumptions violates, then the results will be biased and misleading. That means I can say that I have to reconsider my model. If any of these assumptions that we are going to discuss is violated, if that is not fulfilled, I have to revisit the model. I have to find out the solution, how to create a good model so that the model that I have created is not a bias. It's an unbiased that we name it as a blue. So these are the certain assumptions that we are going to discuss. The first assumption says that coefficients of the parameter, that means whatever parameters we are taking, whatever variables we are taking as an independent variable and whatever where parameters are for dependent variable, we name it as y, have a linear relationship. Second is that the residuals that we have already explained, what do you mean by residuals are normally distributed. Third is that residuals variance. That means whatever the hidden variables are there, which we have not mentioned in the independent variables, their variance is constant for all values of independent variable x, which we commonly name as homoscedicity. Fourth is there is no autocorrelation between the errors, that means between the residuals. And fifth assumption is there is no or low correlation between the independent variables and this is also known as multicollinearity. So these five assumptions should be met and if these five assumptions are fulfilled we can say that our regression is blue. Now what do you mean by blue? B stands for best, L stands for linear, U stands for unbiased and E stands for estimator. That means best linear unbiased estimator. My regression model is blue. That means my regression model, whatever estimates we are doing that are unbiased. Now let's understand all these assumptions one by one. So the first is linear relationship. Now linear relationship says that independent and dependent variables should have a linear relationship. Now, why we say that the dependent and independent variables should have a linear relationship? So, we assume that there is a linear relationship between these parameters. So, this is our just an assumption. There is a linear relationship between the independent variables and the dependent variable, which we commonly name it as y. And if the two relation, uh, true relationship is not linear, that means whether you are getting curvy linear relationship, then the results will not be blue you will get the biased result. Now the question arises how we are going to see whether there is a relationship, a linear relationship or not, whether there is a linear or there is a curvy linear relationship. So what we can do, we can make a residual plot. Now, if you are going to make a residual plot and that residual plot is showing you some pattern, now over here you can see that there is a pattern, there is a line if I am going to draw the regression line, it will go like this, the red line, it will go like this. It's showing the, this pattern that all the residuals are, are coming under this part. So it's showing me the smiley face. So that means you can see this is not a straight line, this is a curve. So this is a curvy linear. That means the linear relationship between the dependent and the independent variable does not exist. But if all these residuals does not show any curvilinear part, that means does not show any pattern. Let's say if I'm going to draw a line from zero straight line and all the variables are randomly, some are here, some are here, some are here, no pattern is being shown. So then I can say that there is a linear relationship. So in the coming videos, I'm going to show you how we are going to plot it, how we can calculate it with the help of Excel or with the help of R Studio. Next uh, assumption is that the residuals should be normally distributed. So it says that the residuals should be normally distributed. As I have already discussed, what do you mean by residuals? We can name it as an error term. So what is error? So error is a combined influence of one or more independent variables that are not included in the model. That means these can also impact your dependent variable, but somehow we have not included in the model. 
there can be one error term there can be more than one error term that means there can be more one variable or more than one variable which are not mentioned in the regression equation that are hidden so we can say the combinations of one or more independent variables that are not included in the model are named as the residuals now as per the central limit theorem it states that if there are large number of independent variables then the distribution of their sum tends to be a norm so whenever the residuals are large enough so whatever be the their distribution should be normal now how we are going to see whether the residuals are normally distributed or not there are various methods to see whether your residuals are normally distributed or not so one of the ways you can plot histogram or you can plot qq plot or you can do the test with the help of shapiro wilk or komal grof simrov test or you can take anderson darling test so these are the five ways by which we can calculate whether the residuals are normally distributed or not now i have given the example over here with the help of qq plot now you can see this red line and these are the blue line are representing the residuals now over here if all the residuals are there on this red line then we can say that all the residuals are normally distributed but over here you can see that maximum of the values are plotted on this red line only the few parts are misleading through the red line so that means i can say that it's not completely normally distributed residuals are not completely normally distributed but yes maximum values are normally distributed now third and the most important case is homoscedicity should be there in the residuals now what do you mean by word homo now if i define the word homo this word homo homo means equal or similar you must have heard about homogeneous product that means similar kind of products are there and scedicity means your spread or you can say variance or you can say the deviations so whenever there is a equal spread or equal deviation or similar type of variations are there we name it as a homoscedicity and opposite of homoscedicity is your hetero your heteroscedicity so that means these two terms are opposite to each other as homo means equal hetero means different when the variance or the spread of the residuals are different we name it as a heteroscedicity so the assumption says that there should be the similar or constant variance in all the residual if you are finding the different variance that means deviation from the mean is different at different point of time it will be considered as a heteroscedicity so if i talk about in terms of regression this homoscedicity states that the y that means we have taken the dependent variable to be y that means y population corresponding to the various independent variable that is the x values have same variance when the x is having the same variance for y we name it as a homoscedicity or in other words we can say that that means change in the dependent variable y will neither increases or decreases as the independent variable x increases there can be a change in the independent variable but there will be a constant change in the dependent variable now let's take this example i want to see the impact of the time spent on study by the students on the marks of the students or another example let's say the impact of income on the expenditure now let's see this diagram this diagram is showing the homoscedicity i am going to plot a straight line from zero that will be a 45 degree angle now you can see that uh, let's say this is your x and i am representing income over here and this is your y and y is expenditure because y we always know that y is represented by dependent variable and income is x that we name it as independent so it says that when x changes by 20 your y also changes by 20 and if is x is changing by 80 y is also changing by 80 now you can see all these uh, plots are this variance is constant throughout this 45 degree so if you will find this type of line 
or this type of uh, variance is there, constant variance is there, we name it as a homoscarticity. But if the constant variance is not there, we can name it as heteroscarticity. But now, if I am going to take this example for expenditure and income, does do you think that if your income is increasing by 80, your expenditure will also increase? No, it's not possible. Now, what happens that if my income is 20, my expenditure is 20. So, it can also happen my income increases but my expenditure does not increase. It remains 20 only. So, that means I am getting this much bracket to spend my income. I can spend, I cannot spend. So, if I am not spending, my income is increasing, my expenditure is not increasing. So, this means the line will be like this, spread will be like this. Over here the spread is this much and over here the spread is this much. So that means there is a variation in the spread. It can be this much, it can be this much, it can be this much. So there is a variation. As the income increases, it does not mean your expenditure will also increase by the same proportion. So variation can be there. And if you are seeing the variation, it you will see is a fan-like shape. So if variations are there, this is known as heteroscarticity. It's not a homogeneous is this is not a homoscarticity. So if you will find this kind of variation, we name it as a heteroscarticity. Now if I come to this example, marks of a student and a time spent. Over here, x is your time spent and this is marks. So as per the rule, I can say that if a person is spending less number of time to study, he will get less marks. And if the person is spending more time to study, he will get more marks. But do you think this is true? There can be some other factors also. For example, I can say that uh, you are a sharp-minded person. In a small time duration, your grasping power is more. You are studying for a small time, but your marks are more than that person who is studying for a longer duration of time. So by studying small time also, your marks can be over here also. So that means there is a variation. The time is this much, but variation of marks is this much. Or even I can say that you have whatever the paper is there for the marks if you want to study. You have already seen that paper. You already know the answers. Or you have already studied the similar kind of paper. So there can be more variables which are explaining the marks of the student. Only the time spent on the study is not the only variable which is going to explain the marks of the student. So that means there can be the homoscardicity also. There can be heteroscardicity also, there can be homoscardicity also. So you have to see whether there is a homoscardicity or the heteroscardicity. Now see over here in this example, you will uh, in this in this diagram you can see that the spread is this. This is your line for residuals, and the spread over here is small, and over here the spread is large. Spread is not constant and it's making a fan-like shape as we have already discussed in this example. So this is showing the heteroscardicity. It's not showing the homoscardicity. This is showing homoscardicity when the spread is same. You can see all the variables are over here only. The spread is same. But here the spread is changing. Here the spread is less and over here the spread is more. So this is a diagram for a heteroscardicity and this is a diagram for a homoscardicity. Now, in the case of residuals, if the, uh, this diagram does not show like this fan-like shape, it shows like this, this part. The change over here is also, let's say from minus 10 to 10 and over here also changes from minus 10 to 10. We can name it as a homoscardicity. Now, how we are going to find whether there is a homoscardicity or a heteroscardicity in the residuals? So, first is we can find it with the help of diagrams as I have told you. Or we can find it out with the help of Goldfred quant test. Or we can find out with the brush pregard test. We are going to study all these tests and how we are going to calculate it in the future videos. Next is there is no correlation between the independent variables. Now as we have already discussed about the independent variables, that means when we are taking more than one variable, to find the impact of those two or three variables on the dependent variables, we can say these are the independent variables. So now it says that there should not be any correlation between the independent variables. And one thing 
over here you have to remember that i am saying that there should not be no correlation between the independent variables that means we are talking about multivariate regression model if we are talking about simple regression model where there is only one independent and one dependent so the, the question does not arise about the co a correlation among the independent variables correlation among the independent variables can also only be calculated when there are more than one variables so i can say that this multicollinearity occurs in the multiple regression model where two or more explanatory variables are closely related now let's consider this model over here you can see the impact of high, impact of high blood pressure i have taken one variable is high blood pressure second is your high cholesterol your smoking your age your family history diabetes obesity and alcohol or there can be various other factors also that i have not considered that will be hidden in this residuals so i am going to see the impact of these variables on the heart disease now if i am going to see this variable obesity and high cholesterol these are interrelated if a person is obese its cholesterol will be high or if i am going to consider this variable smoking alcohol and high blood pressure these are correlated now the question arises how these are correlated now as what i am saying alcohol is related with high blood pressure and smoking is also related with the high blood pressure that means if a person is going to smoke more there will be the high blood pressure now if you can see that uh, there is a carbon monoxide present in the cigarettes so whenever the carbon monoxide in the cigarettes is there this carbon monoxide is going to reduce the amount of oxygen that your blood is going to carry and when the amount of oxygen is reduced in your blood there will be the high blood pressure so that means i can say that alcohol smoking and high blood pressure are related to each other if one is going to increase whether you are active smoker or a passive smoker your blood pressure is going to increase so that means these two are correlated to each other there is a multi collinearity among these independent variables so whenever you are going to find the correlation between your independent variables i can say that it will be difficult to determine that how much each variable is separately associated with the response variable it means that if smoking and high blood pressure are related to each other i am not able to predict that how much high blood pressure is going to impact heart disease or how much smoking is going to impact the heart disease or how much alcohol is going to impact the heart disease now if we talk about this beta term this beta gives us the rate of change in the response variable of y that means whatever this coefficient will be there this will tell me how much impact of high blood pressure is there on heart disease but whenever this beta coefficient is going us to give the impact of high blood pressure on disease on heart disease it says that all other independent variables should be constant but if smoking and high blood pressure are correlated to each other we cannot say that the impact of one variable on the dependent variable is keeping the other independent variables as constant if these this is high blood pressure is going to change smoking and alcohol smoking is ultimately going to change or i can say smoking if smoking is going to change this high blood pressure is going to change or alcohol is going to change high blood pressure is going to change so what we have understand we have understand that this beta gives the rate of change in the response variable y as this beta one this variable high blood pressure changes by one unit and what we are saying that other variables that other x are constant and when there is a high correlation between two variables or three variables that means when this high blood pressure and smoking are correlated with each other it is not possible to keep any one of it to be constant as if one variable high blood pressure or smoking is going to change it will give us some multiple values and there will be no unique solution for the regressor coefficient so i will not get the one unique solution i cannot say that yes high blood pressure is going to impact this much of heart 
disease or smoking is going to impact this much of heart disease because these two are already correlated and if we find the multiple collinearity between the independent variables our result will be biased so we have to revisit our model so how we are going to find out whether there is a correlation among the independent variables or not so first is to find the correlation first of all we are going to find the correlation and if the correlation is high we can say that there is a high correlation among the independent variables so our result will not be good or another factor is we can calculate the variance inflation factor or there can be one more uh, detection we can make the diagrams and with the help of plot also we can find out whether there is a high correlation or there is a no correlation now what is the remedy for it now what we should we do if we find that the two or more independent variables are correlated among themselves so the remedy is remove one of the variable that means whatever variable is having high inflation factor variance inflation factor we should remove it so in this in this example if smoking and high blood pressure are correlated so in whatever factor we are getting high variance inflation factor vif we are going to remove that factor from the model and then again we are going to run the regression model next is there is no auto correlation between the errors now if we are talking about these least square model it is assumed that error term are independent as we have discussed there are various variables which are not related or which we are not included in the regression model so what we are saying whatever the variables which are not included in the regression model there is no auto correlation now the word auto means correlation among itself uh, this i have already explained in the uh, video that i have explained in arima model so when there is a relationship of the error term with itself we name it as a auto correlation so what we are saying that uh, in auto correlation the error terms are independent that means one error term is not influenced by another error term of its previous state if it is there that means if the impact of lag terms is there on the current term or a lag error term is there on the current error term then we can say that there is a auto correlation now if we talk about the term auto correlation you will normally find the term auto correlation in the time series when the data is collected at the different point of time uh, normally we can say that observation from uh, today is mostly like to be dependent on the observation of yesterday for example let's say i can say that today's weather is dependent on whatever the weather is yesterday let's say yesterday it was sunny weather so today we can predict that it will be the sunny weather so that means today weather is uh, if is dependent on the previous day so that is known as auto correlation when the today's results are dependent on its previous day result or two days back result or five days back result so we name it as a auto correlation when the relationship is there among itself only on the previous days so let's consider this example or this model i am saying that the sale of a product if in today's state i am going to see what it will be the impact on the sale of any particular product so i have taken the variables that yes marketing strategy is going to impact the sale of a product or i can say that technology and automation is going to affect the sale of a product or i can say availability of finance that whatever finance you are having if you are having more finance it's going to impact the sale of you are having less finance it's going to impact the sale of a product or ability to tap digital footprints of the customers you are going to see how the customers responds about the sale of a product but there are certain items which are hidden over here in error terms that means i have not included over here as an independent variable let's say one of the factor is your advertisement now if i talk about advertisement it can happen that if i am going to give the advertisement in today's state it's going to change the sale of a product it's going to impact the sale of the product but it's not the only reason it can happen that i have given the advertisement two days back which is impacting the sale of a product in today's state so i can say that the advertisement is in the previous day advertisement is going to impact the today's sale value that means there is a lag term so th there will be then auto correlation among the errors now how i am going to find whether there is a auto correlation or not so there are two tests one is durbin watson test and one is bruch gottfried test 
So with the help of these two tests, we can find out whether there is an autocorrelation among the uh, error terms or that means residuals or not. Now let's talk about the remedy. So the remedy is that investigate the omitted variable. That means the example that I have uh, gave you over here that the previous day advertisement can impact the today's day's advertisement. That means today's sale is also impacted by today's advertisement as well as the previous day's advertisement. So that means we have investigated the omitted variable that we have not included over here. That means previous day advertisement should also be included in this model. I should also have mentioned one variable as the previous day advertisement. So that will be my another independent variable. So if I'm going to add that another independent variable, so I can reduce the autocorrelation among the error term. So there are various other assumptions also. For example, endogeneity is also one example. One assumption and one more assumption is that the residual should have a zero mean. So we are going to discuss more assumptions in the future videos. That's all for the regression equation assumptions. Hope you have understood the concept. Thank you.